What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush. Let's talk Jets Radio. Thank you to everybody that joined me on the stream last night. A little impromptu stream. Always fun talking Jets and Mets. Um, some quick thoughts on the Josh Johnson signing. You know, I think he's like 35 years old. Has familiarity with the 49ers offense. And it's a veteran presence for the room. Something that, you know, Rob Salas said the entire time. It's always important to have a veteran in the room. So you look at between Wilson, White, and Morgan, a couple, a tremendous amount of inexperience. You add in the unfortunate passing of Greg Knapp, so you lose that veteran mentor there. You know, Rob Calabrese is a, a first-time quarterback coach. Michael Flores probably got so much going on. So you bring in kind of maybe a stabilizing force in the room when the coaches can't be there. A mentor, you know, could help help with uh, reading defenses, film study, you know, working out. I mean, I had a chance to watch Josh, uh, Josh Johnson practice. I can't say his name for some reason, but... You know, good arm, mobile. I, I liked him a few years ago. I think he's a solid, you know, he's a solid backup. And, that, and it's a guy that can get you in the huddle, get you out of the huddle, and can, you know, play a football game for you, start a game for you if need be. Whether he sticks or not, I have no idea. I'm just curious to see how this all plays out because, you know, the Jets' stance coming in the training camp was they want their young guys to play a lot, give them a chance to compete, earn a spot in the roster, everything else. And now you wonder after, you know, a week into practice, have they seen enough or have they seen – not enough where they're like, you know what? We may need to get a veteran here now because we can't keep all three of these guys, or, you know, White and Morgan at least, those two guys, and we need a better backup for Wilson. So I'm curious to see how they handle this in the preseason, you know, how many reps everybody gets, and, and see how they perform. If they don't, you know, play up the standard, if they want to try to stash a guy in the practice squad and keep Josh Johnson here, that's fine. Um, so we'll see what happens. And I'm curious to see if the same thing happens at the cornerback position where, you know, I, I understand that Bryce Hall's been, you know, coming on lately and bless Austin and Michael Carter, but you're wondering if, you know, if they don't see enough depth, you know, they're trying to rotate guys all with the first team to get them pressed more, and they're being challenged by a very good wide receiver group. But I wonder at what point do they say, you know what, we need to bring in a veteran. They start watching the cuts all throughout the NFL and start tinkering there because the roster we hear, the roster you see now is not going to be the roster you're going to see come, you know, late August, early September. They're going to make a lot of changes. Probably some surprise cuts, some surprise moves, and, and you, you know, and you really can't, you really can't go by what when you watch a Salas press conferences. He praises everybody, but the one thing I do like about him, if you watched yesterday's press conference, he goes into detail on both sides of the football how players need to improve. His breakdown of what Denzel Mims needs to do to improve was excellent. Chris Herndon, and he mentioned the tight ends, where the tight ends are going to be more, they're focusing more on blocking and the run game. And they'll get limited opportunities in the passing game, which I found fascinating. That not, that could be an indictment on how good the wide receivers are, how much they like them and the running backs. And he also broke down with Mims how he was used to a different style offense. And this offense is much different with the route running. And they expect a lot more from him, things he hasn't done in the past. So Salah is so detail-oriented. It's so, it's so, to me, it's so encouraging. Because when we talked about head coaches, we wanted a CEO that knew what was going on in every facet of the game. And as of now, Salah has his pulse on everything, and it's refreshing. So it's not going to be like, well, i got to watch tape come back to you. i got to watch this. You know, when we say, why would you call this play, I don't know. They have a reason. They, they, they understand what they're doing. They're breaking it down. They're analyzing it. And they have a vision for what they want for their players and for their offense and for their team. And the one thing they keep saying, and Michael Flores said it yesterday too, was they want to maximize the potential of every player. They're not going to take a player and squeeze them into the offense. They're going to take the players and say, okay, listen, this is what our offense is, but this is what you do best. We're going to cater it to you to make you flourish. And on defense, too, where Salah's like, you know what? Last, you know, A lot of these guys are so used to thinking and then reacting. We want them to react. Go forward and attack. Just be you, and we'll work with you. Go forward. Get after it. So I'm excited. Like I said last night, I can't wait for preseason games. I am so freaking excited to see how this team plays, especially the young guys. And they start to try to earn roster spots of the Bryce Huss, the Zanigas, you know, Javelin, Gadry, all these young players. And uh, we'll see what happens. So green and white practice on Saturday. Looking forward to it. And talk to you then.